Exactly. How was the week? You know, uh, I know Led Zeppelin. I don't need a week of Led Zeppelin to tell me how much I like Led Zeppelin. So. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Taste Like Music. Jason, Joe, and Crams are here. 10,000 subscribers. Thank you, everybody who has subscribed to the channel. If you haven't yet, not too late to join the party. Uh, what we do here every week, we take a different band. We rank all of their studio albums. We also have additional videos of top 10 songs and a third discussion video every week, as well as other videos like record reviews and talking about new music, etc. So if if you love music and that type of content, uh, definitely going to want to subscribe. Hit the like button on this video as well. And what we are doing today is uh, making a top 10 of the bands we have covered so far on the channel. I think we are roughly in the neighborhood of about 106 each, minus the ones that we didn't participate in, uh, some, something like that. So we're, we're coming up with the top 10 favorite ones that we've done, our favorite bands of those. And if you want to know, if you don't watch all the time, uh, we do have a playlist. You can just click over there, get caught up on everything you've missed and see exactly what the pool is that we are drawing from for the, for this list. And we'll just get into it. We'll go right around in a circle, starting with number 10. I guess we'll do the same order as the last video. We already uh, did our least favorite 10. Check that video out as well if you haven't seen it. My number 10, 10th favorite band that we have covered on the channel is Talking Heads. Uh, love Talking Heads, David Byrne. I think he's a really interesting songwriter. I think they approached music in a really interesting way. Uh, did a lot of cool stuff and kind of pushed music forward. Uh, just some great albums, starting with the first one and, and basically running up all the way through Naked. I think Naked's a little bit of a step down, but everything else is just great. I love pretty much all of it. So Talking Heads, number 10 for me. My number 10, I've got... The Replacements, hard to beat that three album stretch in there. They were back to back, pretty much runners up in 84, 85 for album of the year. I just love the whole like drunken sincerity and kind of like, you know, rebel sound they've got and just the booziness of it all. And Westerberg's just like awesomeness. He does the drunken poet, I think, better than Jim Morrison. So... I love the whole shtick and I think they're very underrated players. And I think those first few albums are also fairly underrated and they never really disappoint me in anything they do. So go in the replacements to round up the top 10. All right, we'll, uh, we'll do an, an interesting one for me. Cause I didn't know too much going into this one, but I had 16 albums, three and a half stars and above I'm talking about Dwight Yoakam, uh, the one was a three-star album. Just didn't like it. It was a movie soundtrack. The other was a Christmas album. Everything else I thought was real good. A couple five stars in there. And I just thought he was incredibly consistent. Tim and Pete Anderson, just a great sound. They never fell into like a weird like 80s synthesizer phase. Uh, just really good albums, you know, from 85 all the way up to 2016, I think was the last one. So 2017, whatever it was. Dwight brought it every single album. So he is my number 10. All right. My number nine is Peter Gabriel. Uh, just a really cool solo career after leaving Genesis. Uh, always, even at his worst, I think is very interesting and kind of like always searching for interesting sounds and new approaches. And I think his entire discography is very cool. I love the self-titled records, all, all of those. And then the poppier stuff on So Is Great. Uh, just even at his most like commercial, to be able to do something that commercial simultaneously be uh, so artful and interesting, just really awesome. And his voice is incredible. My number nine is Joni Mitchell. Um, she had so many albums that I think are really good and a lot of great albums. And just has a really fascinating kind of trajectory to her career. 
starting off as kind of like, you know, the hippie kind of, you know, folk singer and then gets more piano driven singer songwriter, then becomes like this full studio musician with um, or not musician herself, but like director of things going on behind her, then like a little jazz phase and stuff. I think her 90s albums are pretty underrated. And she's just a tremendous songwriter. She's got a beautiful voice and has written just some of my favorite songs of all time. So number nine, Joni Mitchell, Go Canada. Surprise that one. Well, I won't spoil it. Um, my number nine uh, is going to be ABBA. I love ABBA. I love everything they do pretty much. And they just never get old for me. Like I can just listen to them over and over Always put me in a great mood. Love their singing. Tinge of sadness behind it, of course. Talked about that many times on this channel. And uh, yeah, just uh, big ABBA fans. So that was a very fun week for me. My number eight is the band. I love the band. I think I feel like you guys were maybe a little disappointed or let down that week, but not me. I, I love the first couple of records and really the entire initial run of the band, I think is really good. Great tracks on all of those albums, the reunion albums, you know, I could do without those, but everything up through islands just, I think is great. There's really great tracks on all of those records, even if, you know, some of them aren't uh, completely consistent, but tracks like it makes no difference. Just some of my all time favorite songs. And then the, like I said, those early records are just, some of my favorite albums of all time. All right. For me, number eight, I've got U2, Edge, tremendous guitar sound, Bono, great, great voice back in the day, really just bursting with emotion. You get Unforgettable Fire, Joshua Tree, War, and Octung all getting easy five stars from me. They've got a few clunkers toward the end of their career, um, but you know, at their peak, just absolutely tremendous. And for being a huge band that puts on huge shows, I think they were just fantastic. Yeah. Just, I love the really emotional stuff. And then they get creative with Octung and all that. It's, it's a great ride for me. So, and, you know, debuting a boy, great, great, great debut album too. I love them. Distinctive sound too. Really, you know, the edge doesn't get enough credit from us on this channel for, you know, really changing the sound and the kind of approach to guitar work. So good for him. Right. My number eight is going to be little Joni Mitchell. Really just loved uh, getting into her during that week. And I was pretty unfamiliar with stuff other than blue, uh, which even that raised in my estimation. Uh, the early stuff, the real folky stuff, you know, songs like Seagull. That was great. Everything up until, you know, maybe Don Juan's daughter. And then she did some, some stumbles. Uh, in the 80s as well but even then you know nothing terrible and those 70s albums are just beyond reproach so uh, that was a great great week appreciating Joni. All right next up for me number seven I've got Electric Light Orchestra ELO love that discography just a huge stretch of albums that I love gave very high scores to I love the production. I love the songwriting. I love all the strings and the arrangements and just the over to the topness, kind of like the Beatles of the 70s, maybe some say. I don't know if I'd go that far, but I do love just about all of those records. I think they're great. Yellow. My number seven, I've got David Bowie, who just has so much range, so many different kinds of styles, so impressive with you know, how do you go in the same decade from the glam rock of Ziggy and all of that and ending with just this ridiculous creative, you know, partnership with Brian Eno and all of that and really cool stuff in between then, you know, making some perfect records in the 80s. I love Outside in the mid 90s. Then you get, you know, some good albums in the 2000s like Root Reality and then another decade with Black Star. So he's just like revving it up like five straight decades of putting out excellent, excellent work ridiculously cool style you know just an icon tremendous music it's david bowie number seven number seven is going to be an artist that for whatever reason i just did not ever get into his stuff i knew so i loved so but i never went back and listened to pd gabriel one or two or three or four or anything before i have no idea why 
I thought he was like a weirdo or something before. So I don't know, <laughs> just completely had this misplaced idea in my mind about him. Uh, so that was a heck of a week for me getting to listen to all those albums for the very first time, which is never forget your first time. Uh, even the, the later ones, you know, he doesn't have a stinker in his catalog. So there was no like, okay, I got to trudge through 20 years of, you know, lame Peter Gabriel. No, it's just hit after hit after hit, good album after good album. So that was a great week for me, Peter Gabriel, number seven. Number six for me is Black Sabbath. I love Black Sabbath week. I had a ton of fun with it. Those early Aussie records are so good. I was handing out five stars like candy that week. Full disclosure, a few of those have been reduced to 4.5 since then, but I still love them. I still think that era of Sabbath is incredible, especially love the kind of going off the rails, coked out volume four through Never Say Die. I love those records a lot. That's probably my favorite era. Uh, but I also love the other stuff. I really enjoyed Born Again that week and the Dio records as well. I just think there's a, a whole lot to sink your teeth into with Black Sabbath. And of course, the incredible riffs of Tony Iommi. Yeah, I saw that coming. Uh, my number six, Elliot Smith. Obviously very somber, very heavy, very dark stuff. But there's a really tremendous beauty and honesty to his songwriting and just technically a great lyricist and one of the more underrated guitar arrangers of all time makes terrific melodies you know great layering on his guitar tracks and everything has a really cool sound doesn't have a bad album in my opinion pretty much only has great albums and up some of my all-time favorite songs some of my all-time favorite albums and love from basement on the hill a lot i think it's one of the most underrated albums of all time like his vibe a lot because I can also be a sad little boy at times. So there you go. It's Elliot Smith, number six. Right. My number six was another just great week of surprising music that I didn't know I needed. Uh, I got Roxy Music as my number six. And Cramps is looking at me strange. Now, I'm not, these aren't like my 10 favorite artists of all time. That's boring. Uh, this is how I reacted to the week, my expectations going in, how I came out of it. I came out of a, of a Roxy Music week with a five-star album in Country Life, bunch of fours, um, even the ones I thought were a little overrated for your pleasure and the debut. Didn't hate. Uh, really like, you know, Manifesto, uh, Flesh and Blood. So I just had a lot of fun with that week. I had very low expectations going in, but they were all blown away. And uh, yeah, really gained a lot of appreciation for the whole band, except for Brian, you know. I think I'm kind of getting Joe's approach where he's like going in, like, how was the week for me? How was, how was the, Yeah, exactly. How was the week, you know? Uh, I know Led Zeppelin. I don't need a week of Led Zeppelin to tell me how much I like Led Zeppelin. So that's, you know, that's where I'm coming from here. Gotcha. Because I'm looking at the remaining artists and I'm like, there's no way he likes Rocky Roxy music more than Ollie. All right. My number five is a band that I loved a lot and knew the catalog inside out going into it. It was one of my personal picks. I've got Mont the Hoople and I just love basically the entire catalog and doing the uh, Mont the Hoople week. I actually came to love some of the records even more records like wildlife, which I feel like maybe I didn't appreciate enough until doing them on the channel. And I, I just think Ian Hunter is one of the coolest dudes and one of my favorite frontmen and vocalists and just love his sound and style and just one of my favorite bands. So there you go, Mata Hoople. All right, my number five is Neil Young. Sifting through his giant catalog, you know, if you didn't know which ones were the best ones, it would you know, it would take a while. He's got a lot of mediocre stuff, but the guy just can't put the microphone down. And that's fine. We had a great side three for that. Is it better to burn out or fade away? And I'm a fade away guy. Just keep pumping out the music. As long as you got a pretty good foundation, handful of albums that are tremendous, which he does. I love his songwriting. I love his guitar playing. I love when he does stuff without Crazy Horse, with Crazy Horse. He sounds great unplugged. And, you know, he's just got a really cool agenda for the most part in his songwriting. And he can also be beautiful. He can be violent. He can do all of this sort of stuff. He's got that raw, you know, electric early country sound. 
Some call him the godfather of grunge. I love it. Love his 90s stuff as well. What can you say? I love Neil Young. Right. My number five is going to be my boy, Gene, Gene Clark. Uh, I, I knew all these albums, but it doesn't matter. Uh, my expectations were at 10. He delivered. He delivered all my expectations. I just cannot get enough of Gene Clark right now. So despite the fact that it was like my week and you know, all for me, I still got to put him on here because I love him. All right. No surprise there. Next up for me, number four. Now we're getting to the real heavy hitters. Uh, David Bowie, Cram already talked about him. Just what an incredible catalog. So few weak albums. Uh, that whole long career, so many records, and just so few of them are even okay. Almost all of them are very good to great. Uh, really impressive. Did so many different things throughout his career, like Cram said, from the glam to the plastic soul to the pop in the 80s. Just all of it was so cool and just a great artist. Love him. My number four is Bruce Springsteen who has just been climbing and climbing all the time. Like I, there's no way a year ago I would have put him ahead of Neil Young, but I got him there. I love his vibe. I love his style, live performance. He also, you know, is a bit of chameleon and doesn't get enough credit for kind of transforming his sound. You know, I mean, by the time you get to born in the USA, it doesn't sound anything like greetings from Asbury park. Absolutely tremendous songwriter. I love like the romantic blue collar vibe that he brings to everything. I love the Heartland rock sound. Got a great band behind him. Has managed to put together surprisingly great albums, you know, just randomly when there's, he reacts to like big American moments better than anyone. Like putting out friggin' The Rising was perfect. Um, Letter to You, I thought was, you know, pretty damn good i think he's just great at that i think he's got a good pulse on what the everyman is feeling so going with bruce number four right my number four another band that i knew inside and out but i still even gained appreciation for them i got steely dan it's my number four uh zero surprises in that catalog for me just absolutely nothing but uh, I just loved every minute of it. Just went back over and over and over and just listening to it for pleasure. Uh, so yeah, it's, 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 it's up here just because it's Steely Dan. It's uh, unimpeachable discography. All right. Uh, my number three is The Beach Boys. The only catalog that we've done on the channel so far that have hit every half star increment from zero all the way up to five stars. But they've got so many records, it's pretty easy to kind of just like shove the 0.5s and the ones and aside. And there's still so much cool stuff. And I think, you know, people have in their mind kind of an image of what the Beach Boys is in a lot of the like early 60s stuff and up through uh, Pet Sounds. But man, they have so many interesting incarnations throughout the 70s and just weird uh cool records that i don't know even when they're not incredible or like perfect they're so interesting and like fun to talk about it's just a really interesting week i loved it all right my number three is bob dylan um one of the best songwriters of all time i dig his voice i think especially going into like the 80s and stuff when he you know got together with daniel lemois tremendous sounding and produced albums and i think he just he'll get in a little bit of rut where he doesn't put out good albums and he always bounces back i even love his kind of covers albums later on he had a fantastic album a couple years ago i just think you know he's written some of the best songs of all time what more can you say he started to like i i said before that the beatles you know they had the the brains but he had the heart and he was just such a voice for america and everything going on and the mid to late 60s absolutely one of the best lyricists of all time maybe the best what more can you say you don't have to simp for bob dylan everybody already loves him all right you don't have to go through we all know how great bob dylan is Yeesh. uh my number three i'm with jason i got the beach boys uh, as far as albums go yeah they have a lot of crap but um 
songs. There's probably like 10 or 20 of these in my top you know, 100 all time. Uh, there's just so much good stuff, so much cool stuff from Brian Wilson, Carl Wilson, Dennis Wilson, you know, the boys. Um, and that was a really fun week, getting to know their discography a little bit better. All right, my number two, I'm with Cram, Bob Dylan. So many good albums. And I took, I took a good bit of heat during Dylan week for really favoring certain eras of his that maybe some people don't love. But I think that just goes to show just how incredible his catalog is. There's very few records of his that I think are, are bad. And, and like the Beach Boys, so interesting and always evolving and changing and doing something cool and interesting. And his songwriting is just top notch all the time. Even usually his bad records are bad because of the production or something like that. And, and even those records have standout amazing tracks. So Bob Dylan, one of the greats for sure. All right, my number two is my favorite hard rock band of all time. We're talking about Rush, just musicianship, out the wazoo, cool progginess, and just, you know, the way they went from starting as a, you know, kind of bluesy Zeppelin ripoff without Neil Peart, and then bringing him on as a lyricist changed everything, and then you get 2112 and that whole era with Farewell to Kings and Hemispheres, and then they decide they want to do a little bit more radio sounding, and you get that classic era where they're mixing the prog and the radio rock, and then you know, we all collectively love their 80s stuff as well. Absolutely tremendous live stuff. Every one of them is in the top three of those instruments for me of all time. And, you know, if you're a fan of Rush, they really take care of you. They put out a damn live album for every out tour and album they do. It's friggin' awesome. Rush, baby. There you go. My number two, we just did them. And I loved it. Stevie Wonder. Uh, another one where... You know, I knew a lot of it, but it just made me, you know, realize why I love him so much. Probably with the Beach Boys, as far as like the most songs that you're going to see in my top 100 all time, I made a list of 119 that I thought were at least very good. Uh, so, yeah, I really like Stevie Wonder. My number one should be no surprise to anybody. It is the Beatles what more can you say about the Beatles? Just they're the Beatles. They're the best. They're the most influential band of all time. We wouldn't be sitting here talking about anybody else without them. End of discussion. My number one should be no surprise to anyone. It is the best band of all time. It is Radiohead. They're just perfect for the voice that I've got, you know, in my head and my soul. They bring it out. I agree with almost everything Tom York says are just prophetic to me. And yeah, I think the music is incredibly interesting. They went from this, you know, kind of grungy guitar attack to OK Computer, which is just absolutely brilliant. And then you get more electro kind of stuff, bleeps and bloops, as Joe likes to say. And then you get that cool era with like in Rainbows and they're releasing all their B-side stuff and they had more like seductive vibe and just fantastic. Love it all. Right. Well, I missed the assignment, but my number one, it's not Zeppelin, it's not the Beatles. It's my girl, it's Kate Bush, uh, just an artist I had absolutely zero awareness of at all. Just complete, I thought she was like a 1950s singer that they just like, Peter Gabriel got her out of retirement to, to do some duets with or something. I was completely mistaken about who Kate Bush was. And uh, it took Big Boy talking about her, the rapper, uh, for me to listen to Hounds of Love. And then we did the, the week a couple, it was like a couple weeks after. So it was very uh, fortuitous circumstances there. And of course, now she's blown up number one, two weeks in a row in Britain with uh, Running Up That Hill. And she deserves it. I love her. I love her style. I love just the fact that she just completely took control of her music. And, you know, it was, it was hers and just so cool. And uh, yeah, really love her albums and a couple of them would have, would be in my top fives. I think I, we got uh, 1978 kick inside in there, but she would, she would have a couple more in there uh, if, if I had discovered her a little bit earlier. So I was late to the party, but I was earlier than all these wannabes now listening to the music. So Kate Bush, number one. 
All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Let us know what some of the favorite artists that we've covered on the channel are for you. Drop them down in the comments. Like, subscribe uh, if you have not done so yet. And uh, yeah, I mean, there you go. Our favorite artists that we've covered or our favorite weeks that we've had on the channel, however you want to look at it. Uh, we don't want to give away too much. We will eventually do our um, favorite artists of all time countdown on this channel at some point. And uh, yeah, we won't limit ourselves to the things we've covered on the channel when we do that. But yeah, it's been a fun ride so far and we're not going to stop. We're just going to keep on covering different bands and artists every week and um, hop on, join us, uh, listen along if you like. It's a lot of fun. Check out the Patreon, uh, check out the Discord, lots of stuff going on. Uh, get in on it. Thanks everybody. 10,000 subscribers. Really appreciate it. We'll see you in the next one.